This is the Friday, October 19th, 2012 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Jamie Kowaki. Jamie, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. We've had an interesting question here from uh, Emily in Northwest Iowa. Uh, she's asking what would happen to the ethanol industry with regard to Romney winning or Obama winning. Is there a difference in policy? I think there is a little bit uh, being insinuated uh, by ethanol guys, grain guys, that Obama is probably a little bit more bullish for ethanol. He's held the line pretty well on his biofuel stance. Uh, Romney, I don't think, is going to pull the plug on it either. I think it's just a political decision that we're not going to pretty much lose votes in the Midwest and we'll keep same-o, same-o here short term. But uh, I think it's here to stay uh, short term that, you know, the talk with Secretary Vilsack of corn goes to nine, are we cutting back the mandates or not? I don't see that happening. I think you're going to continue to see roughly about 40 percent of the crop, you know, used for uh, ethanol and uh, the market will you know, work its way through it. All right. Well, we had another question here. Jeremy in South Dakota. Uh, this is a wheat question. He's asking, how bullish could wheat be with a lack of emergence? He says in South Dakota, there is none. What other bullish cards could you see hit the deck? Exports, like we talked about during the regular show, if the ban on exports in Ukraine is long term, watch out. All that demand is going to shift to us. If you throw in some weather behind it, yeah, I mean, you're, you could be talking $10 wheat again, where we were just, you know, six months ago, roughly. So you got a couple of X, X factors there. Uh, I know there's not a lot of wheat in Iowa, but. Uh, 15 to 20 inches behind average right now, year to year, is, is where we're sitting moisture-wise. So it's, it's, a, it's a, just as serious a situation right now as it was back in you know, August. And now you keep track of a lot of different forecasts. What, what are they predicting for moisture through the, through the end of this year? There's no relief longer okay. term in, in, in sight at all. You throw in days like yesterday, a 50 mile an hour wind, and it wipes the moisture obviously completely right out that we have had here lately. It's going to be a long-term situation. Uh, watch the D13 corn. Watch the November 13 beans. You know, guys want to plant in you know, in dire situations or not. There's a lot of X factors coming up these next you know six months. All right. Uh, what, what, what Virgil in Newkirk, Oklahoma, is asking, what's your take on where energy prices are headed? We talked about that a little bit on the show with regard to crude oil. But what, what do you think energy prices? If we can get to the end of the year without a situation in the Middle East, I think we go lower. But we're going to keep that, that Middle East premium in the market, I, I think, up to probably January uh, time period. Just like I said, fundamentally during the show, we, we should be $10, $20 lower per barrel. But uh, we have to keep this premium in. That's something that could happen in the Middle East. And now what in January is going to make people stop trading that premium, do you think? I think there could be, you know, obviously a new president may be coming online. Uh, Israel moved their elections up as well, too. Mm. There could be a change over there. Uh, just a lot of different policies by foreign governments, you know, could uh, could settle them down. And a lot of the uh, of the uh, of the financial sanctions we put on Iran are working. Their currency is is in the worst situation it's pretty, pretty much ever been. So the sanctions could be working, and Iran says we're backing off, and everything settles down. Okay. I'd like to come back a little bit to the uh, the export ban the Ukraine put on. You mentioned if it's a long-term ban, that would be obviously very bullish for domestic wheat. What, what would constitute a long-term ban on exports by the Ukraine? How long would it have to be to have a noticeable impact? Up to summer, because right okay. now we already seen the spread between like the Baltic Sea area wheat and U.S. wheat narrow up, meaning that a little bit of demand is shifting to us. Uh, we've had weather problems too in the Eastern Europe area and Russia, uh, dire cold, such cold snaps last year, you know, 30, 40 below. So they don't have a lot of crop on hand and storage to be selling. So a lot of demand is going to shift to us. And you get out uh, through spring and it's still coming to us. We're going to be talking rationing and wheat finally instead of them of in the corn and beans. All right. All right, so potentially very, very high prices. Very, maybe. very high prices, if that. I mean, it's a wild card, if it happens, yeah. Right. All right, uh, Jim and Johnston is asking, uh, what impact will reported infrastructure improvements in Brazil have on their ability to, complete, to compete globally? Oh, big time, if it does happen. They're not there yet right now by any means with uh, roads, uh, 
you know, storage, even though Cargill, Bungie's are, are down there, uh, they're still not up to speed where we are. But uh, if it did happen, it'd be a little bit bearish uh, to us longer term that they could get their grain faster to ports, faster over to China, maybe wherever they are selling it. But right now, uh, they can't do that. I mean, just the other day, I saw a picture, I think, of 18 cargoes lined up out in the Pacific, you know, trying to get, get to port and get loaded. So, I mean, it's not anywhere close, but I think it would be bearish if it did happen. And so now, as, as Brazil rolls in these infrastructure improvements, is the market just going to take it in year by year and see how things are coming? It's not going to be a giant bearish move. Right. It'd be a year it. by year deal where okay. uh, it would be like, well, we can move it faster. Uh, we're not, barges aren't backed up all, all over the place. But uh, we have seen, though, a lot of grain, though, being moved. But Brazil is now producing more beans than the United States is. We've also seen corn come out of Brazil to the United States just a week ago, 600,000 tons roughly uh, to be estimated to be coming up in here. So they, if their freight is getting a little bit better. What's funny about this whole situation is why is corn coming up from South America cheaper than we can move it maybe from Des Moines to you know, Dallas or somewhere? And also too, corn's coming in on the East Coast from uh, South America since spring. It's cheaper to have it barged up from Brazil to North Carolina, they just have it railed out from Kansas City or uh, Moline, Quad Cities area. And is that a function of the shipping price, or is that a function of the, the market in, in each country? It's just that much cheaper it's, to buy it in it's Brazil. It's the transportation fees. Okay. Uh, the market prices aren't a whole lot. Uh, they're different in China, where their grain prices are about twice of us right now, but South America isn't like that. All right. So really, to see that sort of slow down, we'd have to see a pretty substantial reduction in in fuel costs for right, a little, a little bit or? of that and also too i think just more of a, of a logistical issues for us uh, we've seen the mississippi river dry up into spots only eight nine foot deep in some areas i think that's put a hindrance on it and, and also too this summer i think the hindrance was you know there was a little bit of nine dollar corn being moved as well sure and now we talked about the mississippi river being dry you talked about how there's no relief in sight for uh, wheat producers what about the rest of the country? As we looked for Missouri River and eastward, are we looking for any let up in the drought there weather-wise? I don't see much longer term anywhere in the, in the country. Look at the weekly weather map. Uh, it just gets bigger and bigger red blog pretty much uh, every, every week. It's, it's going to be a big situation. Again, that's going to be the talk. Last year, it stretched from Dallas to Minneapolis, and that, that was the talk. It looks to be the same situation again this coming year. And how... As these, these weather maps come out, and as we look farther and farther into the future with perhaps no relief in sight, these 13 corn, that's going to move up. Do you see a lot? happening on there if this drought looks like it's going to continue? It, it, it could. That's why I'm not doing any hedging right here with the red Dees. Uh I think you got to at least get back to 650, 660 before you even consider uh, laying any grain off. But yeah, you could be, you could be talking $7 corn. Guys don't want to plant, plant in the dust. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to buy acres maybe. Right now, everybody's saying the acres are there. Uh, 96, 97 million acres. We'll have to wait, wait, wait and see and see you know, the seed numbers too this fall, what all happens yeah, as well. And would you say the same advice for bean producers? Wait, see. Yeah, what I, I, I would hold off. I still, I still like beans longer term, pulling corn up. So I'm not doing any new crop hedging in here right now at all. Just way too many uh, factors yet to be seen. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Jamie. Thank really you. appreciated you having you on the show. Thank you. Have a great week.